being anti-us. We want the law to apply equally. And you don't need a whole lot of studying about that. Yes, we need new laws. Yes, the Congress has stepped up, the Congressional Black Caucus has come. Yes, we need to close these no-knock laws. Yes, we need to stop where policemen can just say based on what they fought, they can use lethal force. Yes, we need residency requirement. All of what they propose is what we need. But we have enough right now to prosecute policemen to hold somebody down eight minutes and 46 seconds. Man said to me, somebody, I, 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 I think a lot of people are confused. I was working out. I got to work out in the mornings. Man said to me, white fellow in the place I was working out, said, right now I see you on TV and you're always talking about race. I said, yeah. Yes. That's a big he piece. said, but haven't we come a long way? I said, yeah, but yes. you've got to understand how far we have to go. Right. And you got to understand how deep it is. Yes. He said, what do you mean? I said, about eight, nine years ago, newspaper in New York did a background on my family. And they found out, Dr. Wright, that my great-grandfather was a slave in Ellenville, South Carolina. I went down there with the newspaper and other press, and we went to the graveyard, and my great-grandfather was owned by the family of Strom Thurmond, the segregationists. And I went to the white church, the first Baptist church, and in the graveyard there was there were the tombstones. And the whole about, I'd say about a quarter of, of the cemetery, the tombstone Ben Crump was Furman's and Sharpton's. Yeah. And I said, well, you mean all of these? They said, wait a minute, the plantation your great-grandfather was about a mile away. Yeah. They buried the slaves there. They only put pebbles over their graves. So it occurred to me that every time I write my name, sir, that is not my name. That's the name of who owned my great-grandfather. That's how deep race is that every time I write my name, I'm writing American history of what happened to my people. I can't talk about what my great-grandparents did. They were enslaved. And we're still being treated less than others. And until America comes to terms with what it has done and what it did, we will not be able to heal because you are not recognizing the wound. Freud could have been anybody. But then the reaction was not anything. Because somewhere I read in the Bible that God said he would pour out his spirit among all flesh. And that's why when I heard them talking about it, they never thought they'd see young whites marching like they're marching now. All over the world, I've seen grandchildren of slave masters tearing down slave master statues over in England and put it in the river. I'll pour out my spirit among all flesh. I've seen whites walking past curfews saying no black lives matter, no justice, no peace. I'll pour out my spirit among all flesh. You are now lived to where you've sown wickedness. And now you have to reap the wrath of those that don't want to be wicked no more. That that a man sows, that shall he also reap. So we come because God in his own way, he always, one of the ministers said it right, God always uses unlikely people to do his will. If George Floyd had been 
an Ivy League school graduate and one of these ones with a long title, we would have been accused of reacting to his prominence. If he'd been a multimillionaire, they would have said that we were reacting to his wealth. If he had been famous athlete as he was on the trajectory to be, we would have said we were reacting to his fame. But God took an ordinary brother from the third wall, from the housing projects that nobody thought much about but those that knew him and loved him. He took the rejected stone, the stone that the builder rejected. They rejected him for jobs. They rejected him for positions. They rejected him to play certain keys. God took the rejected stone and made him the cornerstone of a movement that's going to change the whole wide world. I'm glad he wasn't one of these polished bourgeois brothers because we still thought we was of no value. But George was just George. And now you have to understand, if you father any one of us, it's a value to all of us. Oh, if you would have had any idea that all of us would react, you could took your knee off his neck. If you had any idea that everybody from those in the third ward to those in Hollywood would show up in Houston and Minneapolis and in Fayetteville, North Carolina, you'd have took your knee off his neck. If you had any idea that preachers, white and black, was going to line up in a pandemic, when we told to stay inside and we come out and march in the streets at the risk of our health, you'd have took your knee off his neck. Because you thought his neck didn't mean nothing. But God made his neck to connect his head to his body. And you have no right to put your knee on that neck. Genesis 2 said that God formed man. And Jamie, they say he breathed breath, the breath of life, to make him a live human being. Which means that breath comes from God. Breath